Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a red velvet cake with cream cheese frosting, and this is what it looks like. This cake, instantly recognizable by that really bright red color, and this cake has a really nice moist and tender crumb, and then we're gonna fill it, and we're gonna frost it with this delicious cream cheese frosting. So the first thing you will need to do is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And then you will need two nine inch pans, that's 23 centimeters. And what I like to do, you can either butter your pans or today I'm just gonna um, spray it with one of these non-stick sprays. And my uh, pans have about a two inch side, that's five centimeters. And then I, what I like to do is to line the bottom of the pan with a piece of uh, parchment paper just to make doubly sure that our cake does not stick to the bottom of the pan. Okay, now I've already done that one. So to make the batter for our cake, if you have a stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment or you could just use a hand mixer for this. The first thing you will need is a half a cup, 113 grams of butter. Have your butter at room temperature. And I'm using unsalted. I prefer the uh, flavor of that. And I like to regulate the salt in my uh, recipes. But if you have a favorite salted butter that you like, by all means use that. And I'm just gonna beat this just until it's nice and smooth. Okay. And as always, whenever you're making any kind of batter, periodically stop, scrape down the sides and the bottom of your bowl. You want to make sure everything gets mixed together. And the next thing you will need is one and a half cups, which is 300 grams of granulated white sugar. And then I'm also going to add one teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract. That is for flavoring. So now I'm going to beat this on medium high speed until it's light and fluffy. So, you know, depending on your mixer, two, three, four minutes. I'll show you at the end. Okay. So this is what you're looking for. It's quite white in color and it's nice and light and fluffy. So let's get a scrape. And so now we're going to add two large eggs and have your eggs at room temperature. By weight, that would be about 100 grams. And I'm going to add one at a time, beat one in and then add the next one. Second egg. Beat that in. Okay. So there we go. So now for our dry ingredients, I'm going to sift them all together. So I'm just using a like a, a strainer, I guess you'd call this. You, if you had an actual sifter, you could use that, or if you had neither, you could just use a wire whisk. So you will need uh, two cups plus two tablespoons, which is 250 grams of cake flour. Cake flour is, is a low gluten flour, and the reason we're using that, in, especially in cakes, is it makes the cake have a really nice soft and tender crumb. And then we're adding two tablespoons, 15 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder. Now there are two types. You, there's the Dutch processed or just the regular unsweetened. In this cake, you can use whatever you have in the house. And then just a half a teaspoon, two grams of salt. Now, if you used salted butter, I would just leave out that salt. And then we're just going to sift this together. This cake is kind of unique in that, you know, we're adding a, some um, cocoa powder, so you would think it's like a chocolate cake, but really we didn't add, I mean, two tablespoons, 15 grams is not very much. So I kind of look at this cake as a cross between a vanilla and a chocolate, kind of a little bit of a chocolate flavor, but not strong. 
Okay. So, that's that. Now, we're going to add the dry ingredients, and we're going to, a bit at, like a third at a time, we're going to alternate that with our liquid. So you will need one cup, which is 240 milliliters. We're using buttermilk today. That also gives your cake a really moist and tender crumb. Now, um, you want your buttermilk at room temperature. You can buy buttermilk or a really good substitute you can make. You can take 240 uh, milliliters, one cup of just regular milk. And then you can stir in one tablespoon of either like lemon juice or vinegar and just stir it together and let it sit at room temperature about 10 minutes and then it, it's it's about as good as your commercial buttermilk so now what we're going to do a red velvet cake is red so we're going to use some i'm using a liquid red food coloring now when you're using doing this you know be very careful because i've made a mess and I don't wear white aprons when I'm doing this. So what you want is two tablespoons of liquid red. And that would be, if you want to go by weight, that would be 22 grams. So here you go. This is what, and you know, the batter is going to be, I'm going to just be careful. Um, the batter is going to be really, really red. And the reason we do that is because whenever you use food coloring and then bake something, the color will fade. So you always have to start out with a brighter color than, you know, maybe even what you'd uh, want. So I'm just going to put this off to the side. I don't want to knock it. <laughs> so now I'm going to add about a third of the flour. And then we're just going to beat that in on low speed because you don't want that flour coming up in your face. Okay, and then, so as you can see here, it kind of looks, it's very chocolatey looking. <laughs> and now it's going to turn red. We're going to add about half of our liquid here. And again, you know, medium, low speed, beat that in. Okay, I'm going to add you know, a little more of my flour. Beat that in. Scrape this down. Now I'm going to add the rest of our liquid carefully. Finally, the rest of our flour. Okay. I'm just going to give this a good scrape. We have one more thing, which is to add, which is, to me, I've never seen it in any other cake. It's kind of unique to a red velvet cake. I think that's all. Make sure that's all mixed in. So as you can see, pretty red. So now I'm going to clean up here. I'm just going to move everything off. Because um, once we add our final ingredient, we want to be pretty quick in um, getting the cake into the oven. So, put that inside. Got my two pans. So now, in a uh, small bowl, 
I have one teaspoon, four grams of distilled white vinegar. Uh, that's what I always use. You could use like an apple cider vinegar if you want. And then in my other one, I have one teaspoon, four grams of baking soda. So I'm going to add these together. Now, when baking soda reacts with the liquid, it immediately starts to, uh, it's activated. So that's why once we mix it in, we want to, you know, pretty quickly, don't waste a lot of time, um, put it into the pans and get it into the oven so it'll start to rise. So I'm going to add these two together. You'll see it's going to fizz up. As you can see, so once that, you stir it all together, and I'm going to add that into my cake batter and just beat that in. Okay. in my sink. So now, if you have a scale, this would, you want to divide the batter evenly between the two pans. A, a digital scale is ideal for this. What you want to do is have about 520 grams in each cake pan. Make sure to zero your scale. Okay, so now, Take a back of a spoon or your offset spatula and level that out. I'll uh, talk about baking time now. Um, everyone's oven is a little different, but I'm going to say about 25 minutes. You want you, you know, always check a little before because you never know if your oven's a little different. But if the cakes will rise. Toothpick inserted into the center will come out clean and they, you'll notice that the cakes will be starting to pull away from the sides of the pan. So I'm going to say 25, you know, maybe a little more, maybe a little less in your oven. And make sure that you have when you put your cake pans in the oven, there's a little space between the two so the air can circulate all the way around your pans. Okay, so I'm going to say about oh, 25 minutes. So our red velvet cakes are done, risen, I put a toothpick in, came out clean, and I don't know whether you can see that at home, but they're starting to pull away from the sides of the pan. So put your cakes on a wire rack. We're going to let them cool about 10 minutes like this, and then when we come back, we'll take them out of the pans. So now to take the cakes out of the pan, the first thing I like to do is on your wire rack, you can oil it or I'm just going to run a little bit of butter on there. So once um, we put it on there, it won't stick to the wire rack while it finishes cooling. So then just take, I'm using an offset spatula, run it around the inside just to make sure it's not sticking. And then I'm just going to put that, flip it, and then just peel off that parchment paper. Like so, and then I'm going to flip it so it's right side up. So now um, we're going to let these finish cooling completely. Now, um, I, I'm going to tell you to do something a little different. I do not like to frost freshly baked cakes because I find, they're, especially these ones, because we use cake flour and all that, they're very soft and tender. And freshly baked cakes 
you know, if you try to put the frosting, there is a tendency for that frosting to kind of uh, stick and rip the cake. And so what I like to do is once they finish cooling, wrap them and I put them into the refrigerator for a couple of hours, at least a couple of hours, so that they firm up and then it is so much easier to frost your cake. Sometimes if you want to kind of divide making this cake over a couple days, you could even leave them in the refrigerator overnight and then frost them the next day. So that's what I'm going to do. And next up we will make our cream cheese frosting. So now we're ready to make our cream cheese frosting. If you're using a stand mixer, we're going to start with the uh, paddle attachment, or you could use a hand mixer for this. The first thing you will need is 8 ounces, 227 grams of cream, just regular cream cheese, or full fat cream cheese, and have that at room temperature. And I'm just going to beat that on medium speed until it's nice and smooth. Didn't take long. And then, kind of a secret ingredient to this cream cheese frosting. We are going to use eight ounces of mascarpone cheese. And this is an Italian cheese. It is sweet, it's buttery rich. It has this wonderfully velvety texture. It just really takes this frosting to another level. Now, um, I now find that you can get this in a regular grocery store, usually in the deli section, or specialty food stores usually uh, stock it as well. Now, if you cannot find it, then just instead of using um, your mascarpone, just use another 8 ounces or 227 grams of cream cheese. It's still really good. <laughs> Not as good, but it's good. So now I'm just going to beat that again until they're mixed together and it's nice and smooth. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And as always, <laughs> say it a lot, you know, periodically scrape down the sides and bottom of your bowl whenever you're making any batter or frosting, just to make sure everything gets mixed together. So now, for flavoring, I'm adding one teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract, and one cup, 115 grams of confectioner sugar. You may also know that as powdered or icing sugar. Sweeten that up a little. So now I'm going to start on low, low speed, because you don't want that sugar coming up. And I'm going to mix it all together and then I'll increase the speed to medium high and just beat it for a little bit just to get a little more light and fluffy frosting. Okay, so that's what you're looking for all mixed together, nice and smooth, and a little bit of air so it's, you know, nice and soft and fluffy. Kind of that. So now, a lot of times, with most cream tree cheese frostings, you'd be done now. But we're not going to be done. We're doing something a little extra special. Take this frosting over the top. So I, you need a, um, let's put that on there. You'll need a clean bowl. And this time you'll need the whisk attachment, or again, just a hand mixer. Or really, you could um, have a large bowl with a wire whisk because we're going to whip some cream. So you will need one and a quarter cups, which is 300 milliliters of heavy whipping cream. My cream is cold. And that means the cream has about 35 to 40% butter fat content, which means when, I, when we whip it, it will hold stiff peaks. So I'm going to just pour that in there. And I'm going to start on low speed and then increase because you don't want the, if you start too high, that cream will just come up in your face, which we don't want. So start on low speed and then we're going to whip it until, you know, it's not really firm peaks, but, you know, stiff. I'll show you. <laughs> Okay, so let's 
So, this is a point where I'm, I don't know whether you can see that. It's not really stiff because we gotta, we're going to add it into our cream cheese mixture and then beat it a little more, so I don't want to do it really stiff. Now, um, there often is some confusion when you're buying whipping cream, heavy cream. At least in the States, when I go to the store, there is, there is cream that's just called whipping cream. And you think, oh, that's what I need to use. No, because that doesn't really whip up to stiff peaks. What you want to look for is heavy whipping cream. Just there is a distinction, at least in the States, between the two types. I don't know why. So now you've got a light, fluffy whipped cream, and then you've got this more heavier cream cheese frosting. So what I'm first going to do is just add a little, I'm just going to do it by hand. You could do it in your mixer. Just to lighten our uh, frosting up a little. And then I'll whip in the rest. But I like to do it in stages, so I'm going to... Maybe half of it. And then I'm going to use the whisk attachment and then just whip it. I'm just going to do it on medium speed just until it's all mixed together. And then I'll just put in the rest. Now this frosting will be softer than a regular um, cream cheese frosting, but it is so good. <laughs> it is really good. Okay, so now I'm just going to whip that and we'll be done. Check that. Okay, yeah, it's nice and smooth. What we're looking for. Yep, it's ready. So now I'm just going to clean this up, set up, and we'll be right back to fill and frost our cake. So now, we are going to fill and frost our cakes. If you have a cake turntable, a little handy thing to have, you pull it out for this. If not, just put your cake on your serving plate. And if you're using a cake uh, turntable, what I like to use is these you know, cardboard cake circles, so that way you can lift it up, move it around. And, you know, I just buy them online or you can buy them in cake decorating stores. So I'm just going to put just a little bit frosting there, kind of as glue. And we got our cakes that are nice and chilled. Put that on there, hope it's in the center. <laughs> and flip it over. Yeah, so I'm doing flipping it, like the, the top of the cake is on the bottom, and that way I have a really flat surface. Now my cake was a little domed, I don't mind that, because once you fill it and frost it, who's going to know? I mean, if, for example, you know, I don't know whether you can see that, there's a slight little dome. I mean, if you're really picky, you could take a, a knife and slice it off, but it's not enough to worry about. So now, um, I'm going to use my piping bag. You don't have to. You can just, you know, put some frosting on there and smooth it out. But I've just got a plain tip. I think that's maybe not quite a half an inch, a centimeter. But again, you don't have to use a piping bag. And we'll just put some frosting in there. some for now. If you have a scraper, you can kind of use that to push it down and try to get the air out. 
So just push it down till it comes out the end. I'm doing that. Yep, there it comes. And then as I did, twist it, hold it in one hand and use your other hand as a guide. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to do concentric circles around here. Doesn't matter if it goes off to the side over the you know the sides of the cake because we're going to frost the sides. So I'm just going to fill in there. And I'm just going to take my spatula and just smooth that out. Then you can kind of get down and just see if that's, you know, level. Looks pretty good. Don't fuss too much. And then again, I'm taking top of the cake upside down. Like that. And line it up. Kind of push it down a little. And again, I'm going to have to put some more stain in here. Try to get all the air out as much as I can. Twist it. And then you know, I'll just do it here and then move it. What I'm going to do is just go up and down here. Do the sides like that. The other choice is to, you know, just take your offset spatula, your spoon, and just put it there. And then, so you don't have to watch me, I'm going to do the same thing on the top, the concentric circles. Okay. So kind of <laughs> a little messy, but that's okay. Now, take your large or small, whatever you're more comfortable with, and we're just going to smooth both the uh, top and the sides. Now, if you want to do what the professionals do, if you notice, we chilled the cakes so they're nice and firm. The professionals do what they call a crumb coat. So they just do a very light coating of the frosting, they chill it for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and then they do the final coat. But we're at home, I'm not, <laughs> that's one more extra step, so. And I really, I don't know about you, but if a little bit of the uh, cake crumbs are in my frosting, I mean, I don't think that's a problem, personally, but you can decide. Okay, so now, once you have, you know, a, a coating, on the sides and make sure when you're doing the sides you go all the way down to your uh, the bottom either your plate or your uh, cardboard circle because that usually I always find that's where I forget to do so now I mean you could just leave it like this or just take your offset spatula or spoon and just make squiggles if you want to do that um, We'll do smooth sides. It seems to be what all the bakeries are doing, so you might be interested. So you need a flat edge like this. This is, I think, what's called a bench scraper, or really just any flat edge, like you could even use the plastic one. And then just put it on the bottom of your, I'm resting it on my cardboard circle, and then I'm just gonna spin. And very lightly, you don't want to, don't press this into the side of the cake. You'll take too much frosting off. What we're really just looking at is smoothing the sides. Now, if you want like what they call the real naked cake, you can really, you could take off a lot of frosting. So just, if you do, just scrape it off and then... Now, you can be fussing with it. You have to know when to stop here, because <laughs> I kind of go and I do it, and then I go around, oh, I need a little more there. But you know what? I'm going to stop there, and it's pretty good. I don't mind if you can see a little of the red. I think that looks kind of cool. And then the top. If you look down, it's, it's pretty even. And then I'm just going to... Um, Smooth it out again. You could use your spatula for this. 
just to kind of get it like so. And I think I got this is one put a little more brush in there. Even it out just a little. Okay. And then I'm going to do um, like concentric circles. So take, I mean, I've got my spatula. I mean, you could use like a spoon, the end of a spoon. And then again, lightly, don't really press it in because we just want to make concentric circles. We don't want to um, take away any of the frosting. So just, you know, straight up and down and just lightly go around. Depending on, I mean, you could, if you want them deeper, then you will go in a bit more. But I just like a really light design. This is when the, the cake turntable really comes in handy. Okay, so there we have it. I'm happy with that. You could, like I said, fuss as much as you want at home. So now I'm gonna put this into the refrigerator. We've been working that frosting and it's kind of softened up, so I'm gonna do that. And then when we come back, we will try a slice. So let's cut a slice. So with a knife, cut through. And then if you have any, uh, I like to wipe my knife in between cuts to get a really nice cut. So I just have a paper towel. Okay, let's see if I got that. There we go. Oh, doesn't that look nice? It's such a dramatic looking cake with that bright red and then the white. You can see why it's so popular. So let's try a bit. First off, that cream cheese frosting is so good. You know, with the, you got the cream cheese, but you also have the, that unique flavor of, of the mascarpone. And I think that adding some whipped cream to, both it lightens it, but it also gives it more of a richer flavor. And then of course the cake. You know, it's kind of like I said when we were making, it's kind of a cross between a vanilla and a chocolate. It's kind of, you can taste the cocoa powder, just but just slightly. And it is wonderfully moist. With the buttermilk, that really um, gave it that moist uh, flavor or texture. And then, of course, it's tender because we use the cake flour. So a really, really nice looking cake and a good tasting cake. So try this one. And until next one, next time, <laughs> I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.